Watch this. I'm Mike Corey. I'm an explorer and a biologist. I travel the world to carve a path for those who aren't afraid to leave the trail. Let's go on an uncharted adventure. I am the host of a new adventure travel TV show premiering November 7th, like right now, on the Weather Channel. And as a guy who had a phobia of public speaking for most of his life, it all feels a little crazy. More on that in a second, though. Let's jump in. Away we go! You've never seen anything like this before. Wow. How is this a real place? Adventure level, very high. It looks incredible, and you're not going to want to miss it. Yeah. I feel alive! The show premieres tonight, November 7th, 9 p.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. Central. And then we'll repeat every Sunday after that for the full eight episodes. My favorite episode's probably number two, where we rappel down into the black hole of Belize. Don't get confused with the blue hole. We went there too. But the black hole is basically a collapsed mountain. We went down to the bottom, found a cave, and inside that cave, crystallized skulls from Mayan sacrifices. We ended up camping there in a hammock too at the bottom of this giant hole in the jungle. And it was crazy. And that's coming up in episode two. But listen, now that I am the host of my own one hour adventure travel TV show, words I never thought I'd say, I, I have to tell you something really important. The name of the channel is called Fearless and Far. But my friends, I am far from fearless, if anything. The name might make you think that I don't have any fears, but I have so many. My entire life, I've been wrought with fear. And 10 years later, after me deciding to conquer my fear, my, my, not my fear, sorry, my phobia of public speaking, here I am and I have this opportunity and I can barely believe it. And I know people don't believe me when I say that. You see the after version. But now that we're here, let's talk about the before. When I was young, we're talking like grade four, I had a teacher who, let's say she wasn't the nicest. There are other words we could use but she wasn't the nicest or most considerate or empathetic teacher I ever had. I woke up one morning and my hamster was dead. Traumatizing for a little young boy. And I go to school and I'm sad. So I'm sitting at my desk, head down, sad that my poor pet Hammy died. And the teacher sees that I'm sad, asks in front of the class what's wrong. I don't wanna talk about it. She brings me to the front of the class and makes me explain to the class in French. It was my first year of French immersion, a language I did not know why I was sad, because my hamster had just died. I didn't know the words. I barely knew, bonjour, je suis Mike Corre. Not, this morning I woke up to find a hamster massacre <laughs> on my bedside. Didn't have those words yet. So that was my introduction to public speaking. In front of the class, tears dripping down my face, explaining why my hamster died. And I took that forward my entire life until I was like 25, a long time. And then through some disastrous circumstances, a death in the family, a bad breakup, and a few other terrible things all at once, I decided to do something crazy. I wanted to travel the world, to get as far away as possible from where I was, because where I was, wasn't feeling that great. But I couldn't go alone. No way, that was way too scary to travel alone. So I found a friend, and we joined a fundraising committee to go on a volunteer project to the other side of the planet where we thought there was no problems over there. The day came to pay the deposit. I sat there with my shaking hands, giving them a fistful of money, thousands of dollars to book my spot to Indonesia, of all places. And I was gonna meet my friend in the pub after for a drink. I pay the deposit, go down there and wait. One hour, two hours, he didn't show. He didn't pay the deposit. And I had locked myself on a one-way ticket to Indonesia, the opposite side of the planet, by myself. And I almost, shit a brick because ha, I didn't know the language, didn't know what they ate, didn't know the, anything about the country at all, at all. And now I had to go. I was going to be there for three months on an island, off an island, off an island. And I remember saying goodbye on that airplane to my family and thinking I was never going to see them again. I got there to the island and I had the best three months of my entire life to that point. 
and I realized, hmm, maybe this fear thing, this thing I was so f afraid of, maybe this thing is a bully and it doesn't always speak the truth. Maybe it's all in my head. But that wasn't the moment I decided to make YouTube videos. Years later, after traveling and finding these new experiences, I stubbed my toe and I ended up getting flesh-eating disease and MRSA, two terrible bacteria, in my toe. And I was on a couch for three months because just the blood pressure to stand up, the blood pressure in the toe was so excruciating, I couldn't really walk around. They almost had to snip it. I was on my fourth antibiotic. After two surgeries, they couldn't heal it and the final one worked. Otherwise, I'd be called Nine-Toed Mike. <laughs> As I was getting better, I had another friend who's like, dude, you should enter this competition. It's a travel video competition. The winner gets to travel the world and it's all paid for and they get a camera. And I love traveling the world, but speaking on camera, hell no, never. I would never do that. That's freaking terrifying. My friend sent me a text back after me being like, no, bro, trying to be all cool, right? No, man, I don't do that stuff. It's uh, not for me. You know, I just travel. I don't like traveling with gear, you know, F Facebook, you know, that kind of that travel attitude. And he said, okay, well, I mean, then what are you gonna do? Spend another four months on a couch? Because at that point I was in, on employment insurance in Canada, could not work, had no savings, could not travel. And so out of desperation, I made my first video ever ever and it sucked i did like 45 takes of my own name i couldn't even say where i was from i would stutter and sputter but the thing is after beating myself up in a corner of a room like this for long enough you do 47 takes of your name one of them looks pretty good you take that you do 48 takes of where you're from you take the best one you frankenstein something together and there's your application for a video program and then what happened people were like hey you're pretty good at this meanwhile i sucked but they didn't know. I sucked in private, but now I had like a reputation of being pretty good at this stuff, even though I was silently pulling out what hair I had at the time in my closet, in my shitty old university apartment, basically. Anyway, a lot has happened since then, and I didn't call myself fearless and far because I am fearless and I fear nothing. No, because I realized that fearlessness is simply feeling the fear and doing it anyway. I was so scared to travel the world. And I was so scared to speak in public, on camera, in front of friends. I used to stutter. I used to choke on my first word. I'd have to st start it twice because the anxiety of starting a sentence was too much. I would trip. I'd have to say everything twice. Now it's my freaking job. And it's unbelievable for me. I guess the reason why I wanted to say all this is because if you're afraid of something, you should probably do it. And it should make your heart race when you think about doing it. I just want you to know, I was a guy who had a phobia of public speaking. And now I have a successful YouTube channel with almost a million subscribers. I have a podcast with almost 3,000 4.8 star reviews on Apple right now. And now I have my own travel TV show. One hour doing what I love. All because 10 years ago, I decided to do the exact thing I was bone-shaking, blackout, terrified to do. That's the only reason that this guy is standing here today yelling at this piece of plastic and metal about to be on television. That's all. That's all. So, the show premieres tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central on The Weather Channel and we have eight episodes, and there'll probably be some reruns along the way too. I would love if you could support it and watch it if you're in the USA. It'll probably reach a bigger audience at some point. I think they'll be putting some pieces on social media, but for now, you'll have to watch it on the USA on the Weather Channel. Guys, thank you for everything. The encouragement over these past 10 years on the channel, sticking with me, sticking with this video, and, and hearing my story, that is much deeper than just some daredevil dude who goes and does jackass type stuff around the world. I love speaking about fear because I am the embodiment of what happens when you do chase that fear with your hands shaking and your heart beating and you still go for it anyway. That's the lesson in all of this. And I hope bits and pieces of that reach you guys at home. So 
enough being serious. I'd love if you could watch the show. Share it with a friend, share it with a family member. If you watch it, let me know. I'll be trying to stream it. I'm in Georgia, the country Georgia, not the state, and I think I'll be able to watch it. I hope I can. I haven't seen the full episodes yet. Just bits and pieces here and there. And thank you again for your support and everything along the way. Almost one million dragons here on my channel, and ah, oh, I can't wait to share with you what's next. Great stuff, I promise. Chase your fierce dragons, and I'll catch you in the next episode on Fearless and Far. These are my favorite kinds of adventures, but you can kind of choose your own path. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh, whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Is it as an alligator, just maybe like 15 feet that way, or more than that, maybe 15, maybe 20 feet. Hey, welcome to Louisiana. <laughs> In this water right here has the highest concentration of bioluminescent algae in the world. It looks like there's a shower of sparks. Oh, guys, this is incredible. Look at that. See if we can get inside. Man, guys, welcome to Fort Proctor. Looks like this is the end of the road. Let's grab the other camera and explore. Three, two, one. Face jump! Oh my God! Andy, you devil! Oh.